Siempre Cuba ha estado luchando por su libertad. Murieron 100.000 personas. No pudo triunfar, pero cambió el país. There is little question that Meyer Lansky had thoroughly corrupted Batista. It's not a lie. They didn't promise anything. They promised a revolution. They did a revolution. Эти ребята обязательно будут либо мучениками, либо национальными героями. He told Khrushchev, you should unleash the entire Soviet nuclear arsenals. Apocalypse. Cuba lässt sich nicht in die Knie zwingen. Cuba has always been an island of extremes. One big melting pot of karmas, cultures, and conflicts. To this day, Cuba's nostalgic splendor and its extreme poverty can be found within blocks of each other. Even more glaring, is the decades-old clash between Cuba's renowned seaside romance, often reserved for tourists, and the constant threat of police brutality. How did Fidel Castro go from being Batista's prisoner to national hero? Why did Ernesto Che Guevara an Argentinian doctor become a fanatical guerrilla combatant? And how did the radio become the decisive weapon in Cuba's revolution? For more than 500 years, Cuba has been scarred by poverty and oppression. But the Cuban people have never given up on their dream of freedom. In 1953, Cuba was run by Army General Fulgencio Batista. He had seized power in a military coup. The Mafia richly rewarded him in exchange for control of the island's hotels and casinos. Any opposition to Batista's rule was brutally squashed. Cuba is the biggest island in the Caribbean. Here, as elsewhere in South America, Bolivia, Argentina, and Colombia, the year 1953 was marked by severe political upheaval. Cuba is a veritable poudrière. Au fond, it's un peu l'anarchie, contrairement aux apparences, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a d'un côté l'impression d'une autorité un peu dure avec un dictateur à la Batista, donc qui était au pouvoir, à la solde des Américains, mais en même temps, dans le pays, c'est un peu l'anarchie, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a un, un nombre de journaux extraordinaires, un pluralisme inouï, c'est pas la dictature qu'on nous raconte, c'est autre chose. Students, workers and former soldiers were rebelling. Revolts were widespread but more often than not, quickly fizzled out. Because in that time, there were many pseudo-revolutionary people. There were many people who said that they were going to kill Batista, that they were going to do this, that, that, that que recaudaban dinero y compraban armas algunos y algunos tenían armas y las armas no llegaban nunca a manos de los verdaderos revolucionarios de los que tenían que combatir. 
During Carnival on July 26, 1953, a young lawyer named Fidel Castro, together with his younger brother Raul and some 100 rebels, attempted to seize Moncada, the country's second biggest military barracks. Their plan was close to madness. Their opponents outnumbered them by far and had far more weapons and ammunition. Im Ernstfall muss ich nachweisen, und zwar für alle sichtbar und nachfühlbar, dass ich bereit bin, mein Leben zu geben. Das ist Moncada. Cuando es Moncada, hay por supuesto algo de una vez y para siempre, como mi líder indiscutible, al compañero Fidel Castro Ruz, nuestro comandante. The attack on the Moncada barracks was an abject failure. 19 defending soldiers and six rebels were killed outright. Castro's remaining men fled, with Batista's police hard on their tail. The pursuit became a bloodbath. Policemen and soldiers captured and executed 55 rebels on the spot. The Castro brothers and the remainder of their comrades were arrested. Fidel jamás logró un puesto electivo en la universidad. Siempre perdió, nunca. Pero bueno, hizo la, el, el ataque al cuartel Moncada. Eso fue una cosa muy importante en la historia cubana. On October 16, 1953, Fidel Castro was put on trial. Being a lawyer, he opted to act as his own defense attorney. Castro vehemently defended himself with perhaps one of the most famous speeches ever given. He claimed that history would absolve him. Die Rede ist ja nur im Gerichtssaal gehalten worden und ist dann zusammengeschrieben worden aus der Erinnerung. Das heißt, die ist dann sozusagen rekonstruiert worden, in Einzelteilen rausgeschmuggelt worden und ist dann faktisch für Propaganda benutzt worden. Dieser Satz, die Geschichte wird mich freisprechen, der ist doch heute, den zitieren Politiker aller Kalleur und Eigentlich ist immer was von ihm äh, übrig geblieben. Es hat er eine Spur gelegt und äh, ich, das äh, finde ich so großartig an ihm. The court sentenced Fidel Castro to 15 years in prison. His brother Raul and other rebels were given sentences of 10 to 13 years. Castro's father-in-law, Rafael José Díaz Balar, was a minister in Batista's cabinet. Castro's opponents and detractors claim that only his intervention saved Castro from the death penalty. Díaz Valar era ministro de Batista y habló con Batista y le dijo, mira, Fidel Castro está casado con mi hija y están matando a todo el mundo. Por favor, trata de que no los maten. Fidel Castro's wife, Myrta Díaz Balar, divorced him while he was in prison in 1955. Their son, Filito, grew up with his mother. Nobody knew what was going to happen. My sister was around, you know, like, I remember maybe she, she had the child, and, you know, like, uh, we trying to rescue her. In the streets of Cuba, Batista's police continued to crush any signs of revolt or rebellion. Prison, on the other hand, was relatively comfortable for the Castro brothers and their rebels. Sind da drinnen, haben relativ gute Verbindungen, haben relativ gute Bibliotheksmöglichkeiten, können viel lesen, können sich unterhalten. Uh, und uh, dann sagt Batista, der geliebt werden will, vor allen Dingen von den Müttern, zum mm, Tag der Mütter auf Kuba, ist ein extrem wichtiges Fest, uh, lässt er ihn danach faktisch frei und sagt, er geht und dann ist er weg. After 18 months, President Batista declared an amnesty for the men and women who had attacked the Moncada barracks, despite the fact that they had killed several soldiers. Fidel Castro and his younger brother Raul were free men again. Das ist in normalen Rechtssystemen immer drin. Und vor allen Dingen in, in so relativ flexiblen lateinamerikanischen Verfassungssystemen kann der Präsident mit seiner Machtfülle kann der eigentlich alles machen und es gehört eigentlich zum politischen Ritual, Verzeihung auszusprechen. 
Fidel Castro celebrated his amnesty like a tremendous victory. Together with his brother and his comrades, he boasted he would leave Cuba for Mexico and prepare for a new revolution from there. Je crois que il y, y a une période de quelques mois très courte pendant laquelle chacun des deux mesure un petit peu l'autre. Je veux dire, Batista regarde Castro en se disant « Bon, est-ce qu'il s'est un peu assagi Est-ce que la prison l'a un peu, un peu assagi ?» Mais enfin, on sait que la prison n'assagit jamais les opposants politiques. On July 26, 1955, two years to the day after the attack on Moncada, the Castros gave the rebellious group a new name, the 26th of July movement. Fidel is a man who, who, direkte Aktion, also Nachweis durch, was ich wirklich tue, nicht nur, was ich rede. Und im Reden ist er ein Mensch, der niemals aus einem Raum rausgegangen ist, ohne dass er nicht alle überzeugt hat. Und wenn es 48 Stunden gedauert hat. Das heißt, die waren alle schon eingeschlafen, da war der immer noch bei seiner Überzeugung, hat den Leuten in die Augen geguckt, hat gesagt, so, bist du jetzt überzeugt? As they had announced upon being freed from prison, the Castro brothers left Cuba together with other members of their group. They went to Mexico, where they planned to train, recruit, and become the spearhead of the revolution. Donc certains de ces partisans finalement étaient également déjà partis au Mexique, soit avec une intention claire de, de déjà de, de procéder éventuellement à un retour euh, comme, comme ce qu'a fait Castro, et avant lui, euh, soit simplement parce que le climat de, 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 de Cuba politique ne leur plaisait plus. Mexico had been liberated by a revolution 40 years earlier. The Cubans wanted to follow this example. Several other exiled Cubans joined Castro's 26th of July movement. They too saw Fulgencio Batista as a brutal dictator. In Mexico, the Castros also met an Argentinian doctor named Ernesto Che Guevara, who would later go on to become an icon for the revolutionary left. Fidel Castro et Che Guevara se rencontrent un soir chez des Mexicains plutôt favorables à, 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 à la révolution mexicaine d'abord, bien sûr, à l'esprit révolutionnaire en général, aux, aux sentiments nationalistes latino-américains, aux sentiments anti-américains, qui est un peu la même chose que le sentiment nationaliste en Amérique latine. Je pense que c'est argentin. En premier lieu, je crois que à nous, nous sommes un peu étranges. Porque bueno, este, somos latinoamericanos, pero somos una isla, nos caracterizamos por ser caribeños, los caribeños tenemos algunas eh, características propias. In the summer of 1955, the group reorganized in Mexico. Fidel Castro was its unquestioned leader. Ernesto Che Guevara was still in the shadows. It took some time to convince the other Cubans to accept this foreigner. Nosotros tuvimos el privilegio de convivir con el Che en una misma casa cuartel que nosotros teníamos en Ciudad de México. Y era una persona distinta, era una gente formidable. Eh, distinto, pero humano, muy humano. Und da Che Guevara eben Arzt war und überzeugter lateinamerikanischer Marxist, eben nicht in dieser bürokratischen Ausprägung des normalen, sagen wir mal, Sowjetkommunismus, ähm, passte er sehr gut in die Funktion rein und äh, da ihn Raoul noch empfohlen hat, äh, ist er im Grunde einer der wenigen gewesen, die noch aufgenommen worden sind. Che Guevara was just 27 when he met the Castros. He had just completed medical studies and crossed South America by motorcycle. Now he wanted to join the fight for the rights of the oppressed and underprivileged, especially among the agricultural workers. Che Guevara became the theorist of the group. Fidel and Raul were intent on putting their ideas into action. From the beginning, Raul Castro was especially close with Guevara, as he too was a communist. 
Raoul ist immer sozusagen der zweite kleine Bruder gewesen, muss man einfach mal so sagen. Äh, er ist eine eigene Persönlichkeit, indem er sozusagen früher in diesen kubanischen Kommunismus eingetreten ist, allerdings in die Jugendbewegung. Also er war radikaler als sein Bruder. During his youth, Raoul Castro visited Europe to meet with other young communists. In the 1950s, the Iron Curtain divided Europe into East and West. The cult of personality of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin continued even two years after his death. During his trip, Raoul was approached by a man employed by the Soviet embassy in Mexico. Потому что я с этим молодым человеком тогда ему было 22 года всего познакомился абсолютно случайно, потому что мы были пассажирами одного и того же корабля Андрея Гритти, который шел из Генуи в Латинскую Америку. Наши каюты были рядом. Мы были примерно одного возраста, владели одним языком, я испанским. In Mexico, the KGB had close ties to the Cubans. А уже через Рауля Кастро в Мексике я уже познакомился с Че Гевара и с Фиделем Кастро просто по той причине, что я встречался с ними в компании с Раулем. Ну, они проявляли большой интерес вообще к советскому человеку, задавали кучу вопросов. Фидель Кастро был уверен, что все кубинцы будут приезжать, чтобы поддерживать Ромель's cause. Но, unlike Че Гевара и его брат Рауль, он не верил в революционную коммунистическую революцию. Er war kein Kommunist. Egal wie der Mythos lautet und egal wie viele nette und freundliche und herzinnige Kollegen ich habe, die das vorher sagen, die ihn auch viel näher gekannt haben, er ist vor 60, 61, 62 absolut kein Kommunist. The Mexican authorities had no desire to see armed activists in their country and promptly had them arrested. The Castro brothers and Ernesto Guevara found themselves in prison once more. Поэтому впечатления от него, как и потом от Че Гевары и от Рауля Кастро, оставались настолько глубокими, что я помню своему товарищу, с которым я единственным делился вот этими впечатлениями о моих контактах с кубинцами, я ему говорил, что эти ребята обязательно будут либо мучениками, жертвами революционной борьбы, либо национальными героями. И вот это предвидение практически сбылось. Кто-то стал мучеником, кто-то стал героем. На заре Фидер, Фидер нас э, designó para э, mover unas armas a un nuevo campamento que se debía crear en en Yucatán. With his men training in the Mexican hinterlands. Fidel Castro flew to the United States to raise funds from sympathetic Cuban exiles. Fidel ездил по территории Соединенных Штатов, причем по тем самым городам, которые когда-то посещал Хосе Марти, собирая тоже деньги для революции против кубинского, против испанского колониального господства. Встречался с кубинскими мигрантами, которые постоянно живут в США, произносил речи, объяснял свою программу. И потом клали шляпу и говорят, ну кто может помочь революции, да? Давайте. In 1956, Fidel Castro used the money he had collected to buy a boat for their trip back to Cuba. He bought the Grandma, a 60-foot cabin cruiser from a sympathetic arms dealer. To the Cuban rebels, the boat came to be known as Grandma. Today, it is one of the revolution's most celebrated monuments on public display in a museum. Das war ein altes, baufälliges, viel zu kleines Schiff, was für eine gewisse, relativ niedrige Summe für so einen, so für so einen Kahn gekauft worden ist und dann mit den 72 Mann oder wie viel da drauf gewesen sind, total überlastet gewesen ist, schlecht geplant, schlecht organisiert, wie also fast alles. Y vimos que había una lancha, un bulto, porque no sabíamos ni, ni se veía bien, había un bulto, pero que ya sabíamos que era para partir en una lancha y demás. Eso nos llenó de satisfacción. 
In 1955, Batista's armed forces numbered no less than 35,000 men. His army and air force were well supplied and armed by Cuba's closest ally, the United States. Relations between Cuba and the United States still prosper, as exemplified by high-ranking visits. Here, President Batista can be seen boarding the guided missile cruiser USS Canberra. But Castro was not intimidated by such odds. On November 25, 1956, he and his men set sail for Cuba. Years later, Cuban history fans relived the expedition. With 82 men aboard, as well as provisions and weapons, the grandma was dangerously overloaded. C'est une, une petite armée euh, de guerriers qui vont partir sur un rafio qui s'appelle le Granma, qui va qui va devenir une épopée extraordinaire. Estábamos ansiosos porque, de acuerdo con lo que se había planteado en 1956, seríamos libres, seríamos mártires. Por eso, cuando они из Мексики отправлялись на яхте Гранма на Кубу, они знали, что их там встретят уже организованные подполья. The crossing took two days longer than expected. The overloaded boat suffered in the heavy seas. Tuvimos casi cuatro días por, debajo de una tormenta muy pesada. Allí eh, se mareó casi todo el mundo. Yo creo que fueron muy pocos, si fueron algunos de los compañeros que no se marearon. Aunque no se nada, he pasado trabajo en, en algunos trabajos en el mar y no soy fácil de marearme en, un, en una nave y allí me mareé bastante. Estuve vomitando casi todo el tiempo. After seven days at sea, the Grandma reached a bay in southeast Cuba, the beach of Las Coloradas. Today, the entire region is a national park and is called Grandma Province, after the boat and its landing on December 2nd, 1956. Castro's landing has been staged time and time again, such as seen here in a Soviet television feature. Under cover of darkness, 82 guerrilleros, among them Fidel and Raul Castro, set foot on solid ground. Ce débarquement du, du Grand Ma a été, je crois que Guevara, qui avait un certain sens de l'humour, a dit que ce n'était pas un débarquement, c'est que c'était un naufrage. J'ai parlé postérieurement avec quelques marinés qui m'ont dit que c'était un miracle que nous pouvions survivre à cette nave avec tant de hommes à bord. Because of the delay, Fidel Castro's reinforcements in Cuba had left again. The men were on their own. Il ne prévient pas naturellement du jour de son retour, mais effectivement, pour donner un retentissement à son action, pour pas que ça, ça tombe un petit peu inaperçu dans les solitudes de l'orienté cubain, il lance quelque temps avant un manifeste en disant, euh, en gros, euh, nous, rev nous, nous reviendrons, nous reviendrons, donc euh, évidemment, ils ne disent pas le jour, pour euh, renverser le tyran, si vous voulez. Donc, d'une certaine façon, euh, comment dirais-je, le tyran est prévenu Instead of their comrades, the Grandma crew find themselves face to face with soldiers from Batista's army. Eran armas automáticas, la, las que tenía el ejército, y nuestras armas eran armas de cerrojo, de tiro a tiro, con las cuales nosotros no podíamos enfrentar. O sea, no estábamos preparados para enfrentar una lucha de frente a frente. As in the attack against the Moncada barracks three years previously, Castro's men stood no chance against the army and faced disaster yet again. In 1956, when he arrives on December 1st, Batista already knows 
And so his planes come in and most of the people are killed or captured. This close to the coast, with little cover, Batista's Air Force has no trouble targeting the rebels. Por la mañana empezaban a, a bombardear y a metrallar toda la zona por la que nosotros estábamos. Fue muy, muy difícil aquella, aquella situación porque aparte de eso los compañeros llevaban ya cuatro, siete días sin una alimentación, cuatro días vomitando, sin una alimentación posterior que pudiera, con necesidades de, de agua, no teníamos agua. Y entonces un día me despierto con que Fidel había desembarcado por Oriente y yo miro el mapa ¿no? y digo, bueno, la Sierra Maestra está aquí, el mar está aquí y Fidel está aquí. Eso es un fracaso, nos matan a todos. After the Grandma's Landing at Los Colorados, most rebels were indeed killed in the fighting, which took place at Alegría de Pío. The few survivors fled to the wilderness of the Sierra Maestra mountain range around Cuba's highest peak, the Pico Turquino. Out of the 82 passengers of the Grandma, more than 50 were killed. Batista's armed forces initially did not know who among the rebels were dead. Castro's attempt to seize Cuba once again seemed to have failed. The New York Times and most other news organizations around the world run an article saying that the, uh, the uprising was quashed by the government and most of the rebels were killed, including their leader, Fidel Castro. Sur les 82, il y en a eu plusieurs dizaines qui y sont passés, hein, et peut-être même de la majorité. Euh... Alors ensuite, il y en a certains qui se sont regroupés, il y en a certains qui ont arrêté là, hein, en se disant, euh, pas beaucoup, mais il y en a quelques-uns qui, qui sont rentrés chez eux, quoi, ou qui ont dit, on va, on va pratiquer autrement l'opposition. Il y en a un certain nombre, par contre, qui ensuite, progressivement, au fil des jours, se sont un petit peu regroupés et ont convergé vers un endroit qui avait évidemment été pré, euh, pré, préparé, enfin, ou en tout cas prévu, euh, et, et, et c'est le début de la geste de la, de la, de la Sierra Maestra. Non tous les jours, ça commence. Once again, as after the Moncana attacks, the Castro brothers had eluded death, as had Ernesto Che Guevara. They hide in the remote jungle, living off the land and keeping as low a profile as possible. Castro knew that he had to regain strength and recruit new men before continuing his revolution. Cuba was censored. There was no free news, so nobody knew what was happening. The government was saying, oh, we killed everybody in the Sierra Maestra. We killed Fidel Castro. These were communists that trying to take over Cuba. On February 24th, 1957, a front page article in the New York Times announced Fidel Castro's survival. Through contacts in Havana, he had managed to smuggle in New York Times journalist Herbert Matthews. What Matthews actually writes in this article, now it's a series of three articles. The first one runs on a Sunday in February 1957 on the top half of the front page of the New York Times. Probably the biggest setting for a news event anywhere in the world at that time. All right, so he's getting coverage all around the world. Matthews in the article uh, presents Fidel as a Robin Hood who only wants to help the people, doesn't want any power for himself, uh, wants to restore the constitutional government, and is a friend of the American people. Matthew's articles in the New York Times give a boost to the 26th of July movement and make an almost mythical figure out of Fidel Castro. It is said that Castro sent his 18 soldiers in circles through the jungle to make Matthews believe he had a far bigger army. Now imagine 18 men, one of them with a white shirt, coming around the first time, white shirt. The second time, white shirt. I can't believe, I cannot believe that that any reporter would be fooled by that. So they had that there. So all of that information together 
sort of indicates that it's a, it's a, a myth. To continue presenting himself as Cuba's savior, Fidel Castro imitates the island's national hero, Jose Marti, who a century earlier had ignited Cuba's fight against Spanish colonial domination. То есть организация военной экспедиции за рубежом, затем переброска на кораблях, на яхтах на территорию Кубы и начало партизанской борьбы и расширение этой борьбы до уровня гражданской войны. Вот этим Фидель точно повторял все, как Хосе Марти. Para los jóvenes que empezaban a ser revolucionarios, Marti era como un ideal porque él había planteado lo que había que llegar a alcanzar. Castro had himself and his men filmed at the foot of a statue of Marti. To the American press, Castro presents himself as a friend of the United States. To the Cuban people, he describes the U.S. as Spain's successors. And just as Marti had fought against the Spanish occupation, he would free Cuba from the United States and their puppet Batista. Nach 52 äh, braucht Batista das auch. Der braucht sozusagen die Haltung, du als, als, als he's a bitch, but he's our bitch. Fulgencio Batista, America's bitch, was still on good terms with the government in Washington. Here, there was little concern over a group of rebels hiding out in the Cuban mountains. Cuba was like Canada now. Uh, Cuba, Canada is a friend. We don't expect Canada to become an anti-American country against the United States. So the mentality of the United States was, yeah, there's a little revolution there. Batista is our ally, is our friend. He'll take care of it. Uh, we don't have much to worry. The Americans continued to support Batista. They effectively controlled the lives of Cuba's wealthy classes, as well as its tourism and exports. For its part, the Soviet Union began to spread anti-American propaganda in Latin and South America. Once the, the Castros went back to Cuba, the Russians start, the KGB started providing them with intelligence. Партизанское движение развивалось под лозунгом избавления от диктатуры Батисты и про американского режима. Проще говоря, речь шла об изгнании американцев с Кубы, которые господствовали там. Фидель Кастро a tout joué sur le nom soviétique, et ce n'est jamais très clair, parce que il joue toujours sur plusieurs tableaux en même temps. In the beginning, only two or three new insurgents joined Castro's group per month. Among them was Fidel's secretary, Celia Sanchez. They posed for journalists with their weapons, making intimidating statements about the regime. Castro saw himself as the leader of all those who opposed Batista and who would join him for the revolution. Y decía que la revolución no era izquierda ni era derecha, sino un paso al frente, etcétera, etcétera. Y después dijo que era comunista toda su vida. Él no ha sido comunista nunca ni lo será. Él lo que ha sido oportunista. C'est le début de la geste de la de la de la Sierra Maestra, si vous voulez, mais très minime, hein, je veux dire. Alors on a dit qu'ils étaient douze. Bien sûr, vous voyez pourquoi. Dans un pays qui, sans être très catholique, a quand même été un petit peu forgé par l'Espagne, les douze, c'était évidemment les douze compagnons du Christ. Euh, c'était peut-être un peu plus que ça quand même sur les 82, quoi. To motivate the group, Castro, a former Jesuit student, even adopted religious rituals. Comme est logique, ce type de traditions llegaban con los soldados del ejército rebelde a la Sierra Maestra, que era gente muy sencilla, gente muy de pueblo, eh, y entonces aparece Fidel con esa fotografía, con el icono de, de la Virgen de la Caridad del Cobre. The rebels even wear the image of Our Lady of El Cobre on their uniforms. It's a showcase of innocence and piety, but neither side place much stock in either. The rebels were ruthless. This famous photo shows Raúl Castro blindfolding a man about to be shot. Enemies both Batista's soldiers and anyone designated as a traitor were often executed. And Batista's army assassinated anyone even suspected of supporting Castro. I was working 
ya en uno de los campos que estaba trabajando. Entonces, cuando yo siento aquel barraje de fuego, de tiro, me oculto detrás de un árbol y empiezo a mirar a ver qué pasa. Veo que es el ejército y que están tirando sobre mi casa. Allí sentí un miedo terrible, no hallaba qué hacer. Cuando veo que la campesina, que era mi mujercita, me la sacaban de adentro de la casa para el jardín, ya muerta, sin vida. El perro que va a la defensa de ella, un soldado veo que le pega un tiro y me mata al perro también. After burying his wife, farmer Dariel Alarcón joined the revolutionaries, providing food and shelter. Fidel Castro a eu soit l'habileté, soit l'humanité de, 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 de se comporter d'une façon décente vis-à-vis euh, -vis de ces gens-là. En gros, il a assez vite trouvé un bon complément de troupes qui a fait que cette guérilla qui a commencé de façon lamentable s'est quand même assez vite organisée d'une façon qui a, pu, euh, qui a pu fonctionner. As before, Fidel Castro's biggest successes come not in battle, but from his propaganda. Déjà, Fidel Castro, il comprend, on est dans les années 50, ce sont les débuts de la, de, de, de la télévision, donc de l'ère médiatique, et il fait partie de ceux qui ont compris qu'on gagne en politique en jouant sur les médias. It is not the same to fight for liberty as to fight against it. All the people of the Sierra Maestra are with, with us. We have struck the start of the revolution. We gladly suffer cold and rain and the hardship of life in the mountain. This is only the beginning. The last battle will be fought in the capital. You can be sure. Castro's movement was but one among several opposition groups. In Havana, numerous opponents to Batista, among them unions and opposition parties, were working in secret. But the dictator was not intimidated, even claimed to have no opposition at all. There were strikes, there were demonstrations, there was uh, terrorism, there was violence in the cities of Cuba. So it was a movement anti-Batista movement. Nobody was a great supporter of Batista, so a lot of people joined the anti-Batista movement. And all this was generating a state of de lucha, and what se was able to obtain through the dialogue, through the conversations, through the via pacific, there was no other alternative than to go to the arms, to the via violent. On February 26th, 1958, an international motor car Grand Prix was held in Havana in front of spectators and journalists from around the globe. The race favorite, Argentinian superstar driver Juan Manuel Fangio, went missing before the race. The position Cuban de la Havana capture Fangio, non pas naturellement pour lui faire un mauvais parti, mais simplement pour fournir une caisse de résonance à leur à leur aventure. The police were puzzled and the press had a field day. Castro's sympathizers had kidnapped Fangio. They released him the following day. Fangio broadcast that he had been very well treated and did not hide his support for Fidel's cause. The publicity is so positive uh, for Fidel that even those uh, incidents that might have turned people away from him are overlooked. Uh, the, uh, the kidnapping of the race car driver, you know, is seen as sort of a, a casualty of the, of the effort to overthrow Batista. Castro became a media star among the various dissident groups, but no one outside the Sierra Maestra knew how tiny his army really was. Cuando yo llego al grupo donde está Fidel, que era todo el ejército rebelde, Yo hago el número 63. Armamento había muy poco. La mitad de los hombres estaban desarmados. O sea que ya el grupo había crecido, porque cuando había estado todo el grupo en mi casa eran unos 40 hombres, ya habían 60 y tantos. De ahí yo me incorporo. 
yo no tengo experiencia de nada. Entonces me pusieron de ayudante de una ametralladora. Yo era la ametralladorista de Camilo Cienfuegos. Camilo Cienfuegos was one of the Cuban exiles who had joined Castro's movement in Mexico. Before going into exile, he had been shot by Batista's police forces during a protest. During the fighting in the Sierra Maestra, he rose to become one of the group's main military leaders. Clashes against the army were frequent as Castro's movement grew in size and strength. Constant guerrilla warfare and the feeling that they were fighting a losing battle sapped the strength of Batista's soldiers. Even though they still outnumbered Castro's movement by far, Batista's forces never attacked Castro's headquarters on Pico Turquino, proof for Castro's group of their superiority. Batista se puso a reclutar a obrero, a gente sin trabajo, a toda esa gente y los hacía soldado y le daban un fusil y un bajo salario para que fueran a combatir y iban a combatir sin experiencia ninguna. Resultado que muchos de nosotros ya teníamos más experiencia de la lucha que ellos mismos. Batista had at least 35,000 soldiers, not counting the police and secret services. The rebels meanwhile posed proudly for the journalists, confident of their ultimate victory. Batista's army was increasingly unable to contain, let alone eliminate Castro's rebel group. Porque un soldado ganaba eh, 33 pesos al mes. O sea, él exponía su vida por 33 pesos al mes. Nosotros peleamos por, por eh, idealismo. Es muy distinto. La pelea es desigual. Un hombre que pelea por sus ideales vale por 20 soldados que pelean por 33 pesos. Ernesto Che Guevara had come to the island as a doctor to help wounded rebels. By 1958, he was fighting on the front lines. More importantly, he founded a pirate radio station, Radio Rebelde, which became the revolutionary's main mouthpiece. Durante todos los meses, ya son 16 los meses que hemos estado en la Sierra Maestra, han venido periodistas de muchas partes del mundo y se han preocupado de, de la parte, digamos, anecdótica de esta guerra de guerrilla. Hoy aprovecho la oportunidad de la visita de un periodista cubano para dar al, al pueblo de Cuba el primer saludo que tengo oportunidad de dar. De un pueblo que he decidido defender conociendo solamente a través de la acción y del pensamiento de nuestro jefe y del campo. Se caracterizaba por eh, predicar con el ejemplo. Y para él... La fuerza del ejemplo tenía una importancia extraordinaria para educar y para exigirle a la gente, pero exigirle porque yo era capaz de cumplir. O sea, no te voy a decir A, ah", sino vamos a hacer. Entonces, esta cosa le daba realmente un poco de autoridad moral este, en el combate. Thanks to Che Guevara's Radio Rebelde, more and more Cubans listen to news of Fidel Castro and the movement's successes. Hundreds join the group until in the summer of 1958, Castro feels strong enough to go on the offensive. Cuando ya llegamos al primer trimestre de, del año 58, nos sentíamos muy fuertes. Ya nos sentíamos muy fuertes. Ya teníamos creadas unas cuantas columnas. The press campaign was also aimed at the United States. There was a growing interest in helping the Cuban Robin Hood. In the United States, the impact is that people begin to see Fidel in a heroic light and Batista in a negative light. Eventually, in 1958, it leads to the U.S. Congress making the decision to stop all arms shipments to uh, Cuba and leaving Batista without the support. Fidel Castro gives the order to launch the offensive. His group, numbering several hundred men, split in two, with half marching east and half west. 
Fidel and Raul Castro left Pico Terquino with two units and headed for Santiago. Two other groups, commanded by Che Guevara and Camilo Cienfuegos, marched north towards Havana. The Cuban army had mobilized all its forces to counter the action, which Castro had announced on the radio. Y por lo tanto, el ejército había concebido una operación, este, FF se llamaba, Fin de Fidel, ¿entiendes? Que era una operación con más de 20.000 soldados entre todo el frente y avanzaron para aniquilar la guerrilla. July 1958 saw an eight-day gun battle. Once more, Castro's men were on the verge of defeat and had to withdraw, only to announce on the radio they had won the battle. Fidel Castro, c'est le roi de la manipulation médiatique. Il est déjà dans une logique de storytelling, Fidel Castro. Il est avocat. C'est un rhétoricien. C'est un homme qui sait raconter une histoire. Et il la raconte très très bien, ce qui fait qu'il arrive à, à, à tromper son monde. Et des opérations les plus médiocres avec lui deviennent des épopées. Castro's rebels had once again run from Batista's army, but their radio station called it a glorious victory. News of this was repeated continuously on Radio Rebelde. Since the army apparently was unable to kill or even stop Castro, the people of Cuba started to believe him. The other half of Castro's troops, meanwhile, fared much better. Led by Che Guevara, the rebels captured an armored train carrying weapons in the city of Santa Clara. It was the rebels' greatest military victory and led to many of the defeated soldiers joining Guevara's troops. In eastern Cuba, meanwhile, Fidel and Raul Castro marched the remainder of their troops towards Santiago. Ya teníamos toda la parte oriental en guerra y nos sentíamos un poco dueño ya de toda aquella situación. And then, once again, the United States intervened in Cuban politics. As Batista was no longer in control, the American ambassador asked him to resign and be replaced. Batista s'aperçoit que c'est fichu, quoi. Et, et donc, dans la nuit du 31 décembre au 1er janvier, avec euh, un petit peu ses, ses, ses copains, ses, ses ministres, ses, ses, ses croonies, comme on dit en anglais, euh, s'envole pour Saint-Domingue, c'est-à-dire pour, ce, pour le, le tyran le plus proche, le, 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 le dictateur, Louis, le, le dictateur le plus proche. The era of Fulgencio Batista was over. The dictator fled with his closest allies and $300 million in cash. The United States, however, did not manage to designate a successor. On January 1st, 1959, Fidel Castro and his rebels took the town of Santiago without meeting any resistance. The units of Che Guevara and Camilo Cienfuegos, meanwhile, marched on the capital. Recibimos las órdenes, o recibió Camilo las órdenes de partir hacia La Habana. Cuando ya se daba por seguro de que Batista huía, abandonaba el poder. The Cuban state was disintegrating, but there were still 15,000 soldiers and considerable police forces in Havana. Many people expected a coup from one of Cuba's generals or a senior police officer. En primer lugar, no eran tantos. Un dato que te voy a dar que, que casi nadie cree. El primero de enero de 1959, el primer día del triunfo, nosotros en La Habana éramos menos de 300. ¿Mm? Y nacionalmente no llegábamos los mil. It's not that Castro defeated the Cuban army, it's that the Cuban army collapsed internally, demoralized, didn't want to fight, didn't want to continue to support Batista. So you had a collapse of the institutions, the army of Cuba, and then Fidel was able to enter Havana. In both Santiago and Havana, army and police offered no resistance to the victorious rebels. Castro's movement, along with the other opposition forces, joyously celebrated their victory. Fidel tenía 500 y pico guerrilleros. 
Con esto te estoy diciendo que si los batistianos hubieran querido pelear y los ricos estos de dueños de cosas, todavía estuviéramos tirando tiros en la mano. Castro's 26th of July movement declared itself Cuba's liberators and seized power. Actually, this city is like any other city of its size in this part of the world, despite the fact that just 28 days ago, a revolution threw out one government and brought in a new government. Upon arriving in Havana, Castro faced the international press. He was asked about executions and assassinations carried out by his men. I want you to know what happened during the war. There is no the world army in the universal history of the, of the world that have been such noble with the enemy. This was pure revolutionary rhetoric. Fidel Castro knew that his time as Robin Hood was now over. This was not a naive Robin Hood saying, my real struggle will start when I come to power, and that is going to be against the United States. Thus, another revolution had swept over Cuba. This one in January 1959 was the last to date and remains the best known in Cuba's history. But with its promises, its reforms, its crackdowns and repeated crises, it was not unlike those of the previous centuries.